Uh, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. All right. Okay, so we're good. We're back to it. Yeah, One Piece is on hiatus this week, so uh, this is a good time to do this. All right, sorry for the delay, but no, we're getting back into it. All right, so now we're at Scarecrow Fields. Let's just dive right in and start killing some Scarecrows. Scarecrows are actually annoying as hell. They are one of the strongest enemies um, this point in the game. You can kill them, but it really stresses that whole uh, hack and slash premise of the game to its utmost. Because if uh, you don't have a lot of health, uh, these things will take a lot more out of you than you take out of them. Um, halfway through the level, there is a way that you can... Oh, actually, no, I think it's relatively early on, but I'm going to shut up here because I love this cutscene. <laughs> oh god <laughs> in the original the scarecrow there just kind of like turns to the viewer and is just kind of like oh, oh, oh in that one he's like reveling in it he's like Whoa! <laughs> he gonna die all right so you can see one of the scarecrows off to the left here and uh right now oh yeah you can attack these crows as well the crows aren't that big of a deal the scarecrows actually summon crows but for right now, I think I'm going to use my Daring Dash ability to get past these guys. Because, like I said, there is a way to kill them. But they're very annoying. And I don't have that much health left. So instead, I'm going to move this out of the way here. Go down here. These are uh, Spirits of the Wheat, I think these characters are, these enemies are called. Actually, because of that handy little book of Galamir that we have, I can actually look up. I used to have, uh, okay, so... My aunt used to be married to this uh, guy. I guess he was my uncle at the time. His name was Carrie, and Carrie was really cool. He was like a big gamer, and he got me into medieval when I was a little kid, and he gave me one of the strategy guides for the game. And I remember, I still have it somewhere. Mad Farmers, they're called. I don't think they were called that in the original. I think they were definitely called like like Spirits of the Wheat or the Corn or something like that, but... Nothing comes easy for these poor farmers. As Galomir's population declines, so does the demand for their crops. It's no wonder they hide in haystacks. Show them some sympathy and let them stab you a couple of times, eh? I love that. It's just like, yeah, come on, man. These are just regular farmers. That I love how that doesn't even imply that they're evil or anything. Like, yeah, they're not being controlled by Zerok or anything. They're just... They're just down on their luck, farmers, hiding in their haystacks. You know, let, let them poke you a few times with their pitchforks. Come on, they've had a rough week. Oh, man. All right, so anything we need from the old merchant goblin? Uh, we have, oh, we have enough, you know, crossbow bolts. In fact, let me switch to crossbow bolts for my secondary weapon. And we don't have the broadsword yet. I think we get the broadsword actually at the end of this level, so, yeah. Oh, actually, no, 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 no. Let me get the club. Yeah, we have 93% in our club. Okay, so this is the way... Damn it. X for primary. Okay. So, one thing that we got, first got to do is we have to torch these haystacks here. So, because these guys will, like, limitlessly uh, spawn if we allow them to. They'll just keep jumping out of haystacks. And, you know, might, you might think that works more because of the, uh, the chalice. Oh, oh, just let them keep popping out of their little hidey holes, their haystacks, and then... And it'll fill up the chalice, but I do think after a certain point, the chalice juice even stops. Like, they were smart enough to figure that out, but the only way to kill... See it right there, it already respawned. I'm going to light you on fire, light that on fire, and... Oh, can I not go back over there? Oh, that sucks. I was going to light that scarecrow on fire. Now, you can light the scarecrow on fire, because there's going to be more that we're going to encounter, but, um... Damn, that really sucks. Can I not move that back? Can I not squeeze past this? Are you serious? All right, I still think you know what. Honestly, if I can get a, if I can get a shot out on this guy, let me see if I can. I don't know. Need the moon moon for that. Uh, there we. Okay, you know what? You know what? I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent okay with this, because this bastard can't hit me, and I can get him. All right, cool. Because scarecrows, you do need to kill the scarecrows to get the chalice in this level. This is going to take a while. I'm just letting you know. These things have a shit ton of HP. We're going to be here a while. But what they do is they do like a helicopter propeller spin move and slam into you. But he can't do that now. So I'm just going to keep on doing this. <laughs> Hop to victory. Hop to victory. Hey, Arya. How you doing? There's definitely a log. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lag. I can tell you that right now. It's actually really weird how the audio has to work for this. I have to mute my TV and my computer 
and I can't wear headphones because if I plug in the headphones to my... There we go, finally, Jesus. If I plug in the headphones to my controller, the audio actually doesn't show up for some reason on the um, stream. So I'm actually playing this right now. I'm actually not hearing the game audio at all, and uh, yeah, but it works. All right, so that took us... That took us roughly 80 crossbow bolts to kill one scarecrow. Yeah, that's um, these things are a pain in the ass. But hey, we didn't get we didn't get any uh, damage from it, so I'm gonna call out a win. All right, so now we need to take down this thing, this metal colossus, I believe it's called. So we're just gonna shoot its head. I love the auto target system. It's one thing I love about this game. And then oh, there's a little imp piloting it in the bag. Isn't that adorable? In the sequel, it was really funny. They uh, actually controlled giant elephants, like mechanical steampunk elephants from the Freak Show that you have to defeat. You have to defeat two of them, actually, and they were actually way more of a pain in the ass, but these ones are a lot easier. That's one thing I loved about the sequel of this game. It really... Bats! 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 All right, they're dead. One thing I love about the sequel of this game is that they really just went uh, goofy with it, but in a way that really made sense. And they brought back a bunch of like, it's like, hey, remember those imps that were controlling those metal giants from the Scarecrow Fields? Let's, let's bring back the concept from that in the, uh, the sequel. All right, so I think there's another Scarecrow looming about here. And uh, as any... Oh, good, Fountain Rejuvenation. As any good farm boy would know... Uh, you know, having lit fires next to your cornfields, I mean, those are very appreciated. Actually, I don't think it's corn, I think it's wheat. Pretty sham pretty jam sure it's wheat. Uh, get away from me, you scrow your your crow, you scary crow! Can I just shoot them from this angle? Whoa! Oh no! Scarecrow! Damn it! Oh, two scarecrow! Oh shit! Shit! Shit, 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 shit! Alright, thank god. Alright, good. That's good. Um yeah, all right, we're going to have to come back here later and kill them. I mean, we could do it now, but I kind of don't want to. These guys are scary. It's a lot easier just to shoot an imp in the back and destroy their giant. All right, run, 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 run. I'm going to switch to the hammer here. Muriel, fetch me my mallet. Boom! I love that. Oh, that was a two-for-one special. What do we got here? These fields are home to many mad machines. Yet the most bizarre of them is housed ah. in this farm. Okay, well, thank you, Betty White. Uh, all right, so the rule of thumb here is first we got to find another fire. Which I believe there's one right over here. Yes. Okay, so the rule of thumb here with this uh, wheat field is do not enter the wheat because you will die immediately. Uh, I mean, you might be able to get like one or two steps in. But when I was a kid, we, me and my friend Ian, when we'd be playing this, we'd always be trying to stress test it to see uh, how long how long can you really stay in the wheat. And it's, it's not long. Oh, shit. Is he almost there? I could have died, honestly. Die, you fool! Ah, oh, man, even lighting them on fire. I thought lighting them on fire was like... You know what? I think that was something only in Resurrection. Where lighting them on fire in Resurrection was basically a instant KO. Because I think they realized... Resurrection I love, but it did really make the game a little bit too easy at times. I don't really remember struggling that much in Resurrection. Because in Resurrection, you could even go to the... If you're running low on health and you can't find it anywhere... Look at those little bastards jumping around in the cornfield over there. <laughs> But no, yeah, in Resurrection, if you're um, if you were running low on health, you could just go to a Merchant Goblin or a Merchant Gargoyle, and you could just buy more health. You could just, like, for, and it wasn't even that much either. For, like, 100 gold, you could buy, uh, whoa, don't, oh, actually, no, that one's a good one. We can open that one in a second. Um, you could buy energy vials. And an energy vial, it's, it's obviously not as much as a life bottle, but it's, like, you know, two-thirds of a life bottle in one energy vial. And say so you just buy a bunch of that until you're back at health if you're looking too uh, if it's looking too rough for you. All right, so this is a dragon god that is going to be our friend here. Oh, I could have died there. Kill the scarecrows, dragon god! Kill them! I will bash them with a hammer if you help me out a little bit here. You're the power of Mjolnir. Oh, man, these things take forever to bring down. Ugh! Look at this. Look at this thing. It is chopping away my health right now. All right. I think they're both dead. 
Oh, man. Look at that. I'm down to one life bottle. I'm going to backtrack to that uh, fountain here. Where are we at right now? 80% of the chalice. I think we'll be okay. If I have to, I'll backtrack to... Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Because long... he doesn't stick around forever. Ugh! Oh, man. This thing just eats away the health. Okay. We got to... We gotta back up here if we're taking too many hits. Ugh, okay. Oh, man. Alright. Um. Did I kill both of them? Maybe the dragon god took care of the rest. Thank you, Mr. Dragon! That's how dragons sound, in case you didn't know. I auto-locked on. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Alright. Well, get as much health back as we can. Where did you get that game? I could not find it. Uh, PS Store, dude. It's a download. But no Pokemon Let's Play. Well, Sword and Shield comes out this weekend. Typically what I do with Sword and... Sh uh, well, typically what I do with... um, uh, Not Sword and Shield. Well, I haven't played Sword and Shield yet. But typically what I do with the new Pokemon games is... um, I... Uh, play through the whole game like normal and then after that i will normally uh like let's play the uh elite four in the champion battle and since i have the elgato now i can actually do that how is my mic quality by the way i wanted to ask because i'm doing the blue snowball right now and my snowball it, it works okay but it's one of my old so i'm gonna drop that a little bit there Sword and Shield starter. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna go with Score Bunny because uh, rabbit. And it's not like I have a thing for rabbits or anything, but you know, I I just I just think Score Bunny is the single best starter, and you're wrong if you think otherwise. That's just my opinion that you're wrong, of course. But my opinion. Come on, don't. Isn't it? There we go. Well, I missed the bat. There we go. I love how it is like there's the bi the bats and the mice in this game. It's just one hit and uh, one hit and they just explode in green goo. Love that. I also love the logic from the first game. It's just like, well, we can't use red blood, so everything just explodes green. If it's green colored, it's fine. If it's blue blood, if it's green blood, that's all good. Red blood can't have that. All right. So, that's good there. Now we just need a missing cog piece in order to get this uh, farming implement working. And then the farming implement will cut through the wheat. And then we can get to that. See that area off to the uh, in front of me here? You can kind of make it out here. There you go. You see the chalice over there. You see some goodies and some energy vials. Yeah, we need to find a gear in order to get that farming machine to start up. And I believe... Oh, wait. No, there's one more of these. That's good. That'll actually probably finish off the chalice. How much is medieval? Well, I got myself the Deluxe Edition, like the Super Undead Edition, whatever it was called. And that cost, I think, about uh, 30 or 40 bucks. I think it was 30. Uh, the original, like just the, just the regular game, uh, I think you're probably only looking at probably like 20 bucks. There we go. Ah! Uh, back to Farmer Hell with you! Alright. Oh, I'm running low on crossbow bolts here. Run, Dan, run. And I think that's all it is for. Ah, oh, crap. Just, no, no, no. Just as I, I was about to say, well, I think that's it for regular enemies in the game. Because now we just have to go through this uh, farming thresher machine of hell. But, oh, we do get another fountain of rejuvenation, so that's nice. So we got to go through this now, and then, uh, then we'll be able to get the cog and then get out of this level. We actually have to go through over here twice. Do you think we'll see a Medieval, Medieval 2 remake? I really want it to be. I was actually watching some gameplay footage of Medieval 2 the other day. It's been a few years since I've played it. Uh, the last time I played it was actually for the uh, Let's Play on my blog channel, honestly. Well, I think I did a stream. I don't think I recorded every single episode of that one Let's Play. But, um, yeah. So, I hope they do. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't this time around. Like I said, the Insane Trilogy with... Uh, Crash Bandicoot, they did all three games. Spyro, they did all three games. Medieval only had two games. You know? And, uh, oh, no, that's the exit. We don't want the exit, yes. You know, Spyro, I mean, they had all three games. We only had two games for Medieval. 
They only they only remade one. I mean, I love them for it, but I just feel like the first game. The first game's been made when been um, remade twice. You had the original first game of Medieval in 1998, and then in 2005, Resurrection came out, and now in 2019, you got um, you know, you got the remake that I'm playing right now. But you know, the the sequel doesn't get nearly as much love, and I actually kind of like the sequel in a lot more regards than the first. Um, I, I would definitely play the second one a lot more than the first one if you're just talking about the original. Like, if like if we're talking like the uh, original PS1, and you gave me a choice to play the original Medieval or Medieval 2, I'm gonna go with Medieval 2. Because it was one of those sequels that it didn't change the gaming mechanics that much. It didn't make anything stupid. I mean, it added new stuff, but the stuff that it added made sense. It didn't change the controls around. I'm going this way so I can get more money. Money, 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 Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs, you can't run into the wheat thresher in order to get the money. Well, SpongeBob, me boy. The things I wouldn't do for money. All right, so I'm just going to run past you, Scary Scarecrow. I don't want to talk to you, Scary Scarecrow. You're scary. All right. I, oh, no, 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 no. Get away from me. Get away from me, Scary Scarecrow. I don't like you. I killed you. You just want to kill me because I killed all your friends. That's not fair. All right, here we go. Here we go. The harvester part, which kind of looks like a key. Oh, God damn, that thing is terrifying. Who decided to build the freaking wheat thresher out of a fr like out of spider DNA? Like who decided like let's make it look like a spider? That'll be a good uh, that's a good design. I mean it looks pretty creepy. Medieval 2 is just funnier. Yeah, it was. I mean no, there were points in Medieval 2 that were pretty scary. There's a point where you have to go into uh this place called Wolf from Hall. I still got nicked by that thing. Oh, I got a life bottle. Cool. Whenever you get a life bottle, you automatically replenish all other life bottles. It uh, your cup floweth over as it would. Oh no no. But no yeah. There's a scene in um, Medieval Two where there's a level where you have to go into Wolf from Hall and you fight vampires and they're not like vampires like. Well, there is the, you fight the Count, which is like you know Dracula. Like blah, I want to suck your blood, and he's pretty funny. But the regular vampires in the uh, level are just like um, you know creepy monsters. You know, they're not like, you know, the vampires that wear cloaks and they're just like, you know, winged, you know, uh, horrible mutants, basically. And the music that plays throughout that level is like really eerie. They got some really good music in Medieval 2. Um, I think they actually, because it takes place in the Victorian era. It takes place in Victorian London in like 1886. Uh, the original Medieval does. I mean, the second Medieval. So I think they took some actual like compositions and they used that um, as the background music and they work so well. Uh, Whitechapel is my favorite level where you go through Whitechapel and you have to dress Dan up as an English gentleman, <laughs> complete with a beard and a cane, in order to uh, sneak into this nightclub where this busty woman tells you that your girlfriend's gotten slain by Jack the Ripper. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it mixes back and forth between uh, humor and uh, horror, but it does it well. All right. So the scarecrow fields are behind us. That one scarecrow, though, he's going to be coming after our asses. Uh, we uh, we killed his entire family. He's going to be coming after us. I hope we get the enchanted sword. I'm pretty sure we do. Uh, what? 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 You don't have anything to say this time? You don't have any smart-ass remark? Okay, fair enough. Okay, we're up to five cups. Five cups. See? One, two, three, four, five. King. Now we only have four cups. All right, so this is uh, Woden. See what Woden has to say. Fortis, you, you jawless arrow magnet. What are you doing back here? <laughs> Call me Mr. Woden the Mighty. Whoa, whoa, Woden. People of Gallomere, that their fate should once again be in the hands of a chump like you. Still, I suppose it's not fair to take it out on them. Take my sword and do try to stab yourself in the I don't know, man. It looks pretty chipped to me. That thing looks like it's been through a lot of battles. I don't know. I want to get that thing sharpened before I use it first. Out from hero material. I love that conversation. That, co that conversation... Okay, so he's giving us this sword out of pity, then. 
It's just like, well, it doesn't look like you're cut from hero material, but whatever, I'll give you the sword. Not much else to do here. I also like a nice touch is that the weapon will actually disappear from the statue as they give it to you. And uh, after, uh, not next level, but after the level after that, we'll be able to ascend to the upper floors of the Hall of Heroes. Yeah, so that was Woden. Woden the Mighty with his mighty um, wing shoulder guard things. So this is the uh, Enchanted Broadsword. All right, so here's the deal with this thing. Uh, you see the number next to it, 95? As long as we have it equipped, that number will decrease. And when it gets down to zero, we can still use it, but it's like a regular sword. So even without um, any magic, I still believe the base stats are stronger than the small sword. Uh, but obviously, it's really good when it's charged up. Now, I didn't use the broadsword a lot when I was growing up because I felt like it was a waste of money. Because this thing, you know, we only had it out for like five seconds and already it's down to 95%. So I think it's like every second a percentage goes down. Um, and in the later levels, you will be using this thing a lot. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to have to get more bolts for my crossbow. But I will make that my secondary weapon and use that right now. And then I will head off to Pumpkin Gorge. Not George, Gorge. Pumpkin George hasn't been around these parts in years. That was uh, that was the line Tom Baker used. Tom Baker added so much like, humor from Resurrection. I really wish they... That's one thing. Like, they're going to bring anything back from Resurrection. Because Resurrection really was... They dialed up the comedy elements, like, to the umph degree. Like, Resurrection was not a horror game. Um, you know, but Tom Baker, just like the dry wit that he had, it just... It made it work. It really made it work. All right, so from this point on, we can either go to Pumpkin Gorge here, or we can head to the Sleeping Village. Um, heading to the Sleeping... I mean, we can honestly do that now. At the end of both of these routes, um, you can kind of see that hedge mage up there to the uh, upper left. Um, or the... yeah. Um, and that's the Asylum. And then the uh, Pumpkin Serpent is at the end of this route here. Um, I don't think it really matters which level we go at first. Um, it's just at the end of each of these paths, we have to get a dragon gem. And the dragon gem is um, necessary to continue onward in the game. So I just always do Pumpkin Gorge first. And I think the game, even because when you leave Scarecrow Fields, they even say, like, Pumpkin Gorge, dead ahead. So I think they want you to definitely play Pumpkin Gorge first. But you could do the Sleeping Village if you wanted to. Tom Baker is an amazing doctor. Yeah, he's also the fourth uh, doctor, which is probably considered by many to be the single best doctor. I would consider him to be the best. Um, I mean, considering I didn't really grow up with the classic series, my favorite doctor was probably Matt Smith. I mean, if you're going to put Matt Smith and David Tennant, Matt Smith is the first doctor I saw like a whole season of. Uh, David Tennant was the, the first episode of Doctor Who I ever saw was Blink, and there was a girl in my high school that recommended that show, and I never even saw it before. I've heard of it, never watched it, and she's like, watch an episode called Blink, and that's funny she recommended that one, because that wasn't even, a, that was not even an episode that strongly featured the Doctor, but it was a really good show, and, um, I just fell in love with it from that point, but after that point, I mean, this was, uh, when season, uh, five, or series five was airing, and oh no, oh no, pumpkins, pumpkins, evil pumpkins, and that was when, you know, series five was airing, and, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's when I, uh, fell in love with Matt Smith there. Oh, good, Merchant Goblin. Oh, gee, I wonder... Uh, how much money do we have? Oh, we're set. Let's fill up here. Oh, gee, I wonder if this um, oddly colored wall is going to lead to anything. I wonder. It's impossible. Burm! Nope, probably nothing. Burm? Yep, nope, nothing. Oh, that reminds me. Um, After this level, we have to make a detour back to our tomb. We have to head back to Dan's crypt for a uh, handy little hidden object. So, yeah. Chalice is right here. Got some money, money, money. And I actually shouldn't have came out this way. I actually should have looped back around. But, oh well. Beggars can't be choosy, I suppose. Gotta be careful, because you're gonna run right into those tentacle things if you're not careful of your surroundings. Alright, okay, we're good. We're good. Alright. Whoa! Yeah, these things are everywhere. You can actually shoot them down with Yeah, Don't waste your uh, bullets on them. And, of course, regular pumpkins, I guess, do not count for the chalice. The chalice, the Hall of Heroes is like, you can't kill pumpkins, man. We're heroes of legend. We didn't get this way by slaying damn vegetables. I mean, if they're evil vegetables, sure. But, oh, no, evil vegetables, no. Ugh, smash some pumpkins. 
You ever make pumpkin pie? I've made pumpkin pie. It's pretty damn good. Made some banana bread the other day. I'm a fan of vegetable-based dishes. I made like a uh, steak stir-fry today. I included some snow peas in there. Some some snow peas. And I actually throw... Um, if you've never... If you've made uh, stir-fries before, I'm going to recommend throwing pecans. Throw in some pecans and some butter. Get them all covered in butter and oil and uh, whatever sauce you're using. I, I used like a Szechuan sauce for my stir fry today, but um, I'm telling you, man, pecans and stir fry, they taste freaking delicious. Or any kind of roasted nut, I'm a fan of. All right, I think I took out all the, uh, I think I took out all of the demon pumpkins. Yeah, this is the, this, okay, okay, good, good, good. Let's hit the backtrack, because if we don't take these guys out now, then I don't think the chalice gets filled up. I think it was one of those, there's, uh, there's some wiggle room for the chalice, like a few enemies, but for the most part, I think you really do need, I th I, in fact, I think in some levels, you really do need to kill every single enemy in order to get the chalice 100%. Alright, I was gonna say, where are you coming? Where are you coming from, you demon pumpkin? So yeah, this, uh, I said, that weapon is very handy. Okay, got the moon rune. You can go in this building here. Oh no, no, exploding pumpkins! No! It's like on a time bomb or something. And I can't pick up that pitchfork, unfortunately. Can't use that weapon. Pitchfork is not a weapon for a hero. Now a wooden stick. That's a weapon for a hero. Would a club be considered a stick? When I think of stick, I think of just like a really thin branch. You know? I mean, a club is the same basic premise, just a piece of wood. But you wouldn't consider a, uh, a plank... You wouldn't consider a plank a stick. You wouldn't consider... I guess you wouldn't consider a club a stick. What would you consider a club? I would consider a club a club, I guess. You have PS4? Yes, I have PS4. Thanks for asking. Thanks for playing. I was actually playing this on a pumpkin right now. All right. Yeah, but a Pumpkin Gorge, man, I'll tell you what. Pumpkin Gorge was the most fun level for me to do back in the day when I did the first run-through of Medieval because I did that whole skit. You can go back and watch it. I did that whole skit where pumpkins were attacking me, and even when I did the remake, when I well not the remake, but I did the second Let's Play of Medieval, because I did this is the this is the third time I've played this game on YouTube. Just letting you know, I did the original back in 2009 when I first started. I think in 2013 I did another one, and then here uh, I'm doing this the remake. So this game I can never escape this game. This game is always part of my life, and I'm gonna charge up this sword because yeah, they're gonna go nuts with this. Ha ha! On God, demon vegetables! I will slice you down into the deep, dark crypts of hell. That's like, that's the tenth circle of hell. The tenth circle of hell is reserved specifically for evil vegetables. Radishes, too. Don't trust radishes. You see a radish, you run in the opposite direction immediately. Alright. Pumpkin magic! Do you like God of War? Um, so I've played the God of War that came out a few, like the recent one. I don't know what the most recent one was called, but I got that one and I played it a little bit and I uh, haven't really, haven't really finished it or even gotten like probably 10% into the game. But, uh, I beat the first boss. I remember that. Whoa! Let's see, we're down to already 42% on these things. We gotta be careful how we use these things. Cut right through them like butter. I got myself uh, a fancy knife. One of my friends of the family uh, is working for a company called Cutco, and they sell knives. And he's like, hey, I'll sell you a knife. And I'm like, you know what? You know, I like... Uh... Oh, these are magic mushrooms. Whoa, dude. These mushrooms are, like, floating, bro. But no, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm into cooking lately. And so I'm like, yeah, you know, my one knife that I have is a, uh, Faber a Farberware knife. And it's uh, it's getting pretty, uh, pretty old. I've had it for about a year, and... It wasn't, it's a pretty cheap knife. It was only like five bucks. So uh, it's starting to rust up and it's just stainless steel. So uh, I was like, okay, I'll get a new knife. So I got this uh, chef's knife from him. And my God, that thing is razor sharp. I used it to actually cut onions today. And it's like, damn, that sucker is sharp. So I will try to not horribly maim myself with this new kitchen knife I have. Um, but if you uh, let me, if I, if I ever have to make a video from the emergency room, you'll know that's what that was for. It's like, hey guys, what's up? Teching here. So I sliced my thumb almost all the way off with, um, <laughs> I almost sliced my thumb off here. So, uh, you know, just letting you know, no One Piece review this week, but, uh, I did make a damn good, uh, damn good stir fry. All right. Where is this earth rune? 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, okay. I think I know where I have to go for this. And, you know, just in general, something that I love about the remake... You know, this doesn't just go for Medieval. This goes for all the PS uh, remakes they've been doing with uh, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. And just, you know, those games are so good. The one problem I always have for them on the original, though, is the simple fact of the detection. You know, their camera and the jump detection were always not that great. I mean, I mean, they weren't bad. I mean, there were games that were definitely worse. Damn it, I knew you were going to do that. I'm like, I guess there's no demon pumpkins in this section. Hacha! But yeah, um, just the idea that you can jump, and I think with Medieval it's a lot more apparent. Crash Bandicoot 2 was a platformer. Shoot down the evil pumpkins! They need a lot of pump. I'll pump them full of bolts. So how come crossbow... Why are they called crossbow bolts and not crossbow arrows? Never understood that. Just call them bolts. Tap, 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 tap. Just call them arrows, I think. Refill on this. I do have throwing knives, but throwing knives are really all not all that great. The crossbow has more rapid fire anyway. Can I break that? I think I can. Whoa, no, go back. Charge him up. Oh, this is our last chance for romance here. All right. And you can see there the uh, the sword actually lasted. I used that a lot longer than I could have. Um, I, I could have really drained that really early on. But we got another shield, and now. See if we can uh, break this. There we go. Oh, that's just a teleportation to the bottom. Well, that's nice. It gave us a nice little teleportation to the bottom of the place. All right. Oh, we got healed up. Okay, good. Yeah, awesome. Even after all that, we're still healed. Uh, where are we going now? Uh, over here. Yeah, we're going over here. We need that. Uh, we need to use that uh, star rune to uh, unlock the magic mushroom gate. Magic mushroom gate. Hoppity, hoppity, hop, hop, hop. I say, oh yeah, the jump detection, the jump detection is great, and I immediately fall off the mushroom. <laughs> I'm good. All right, I'm feeling like we're gonna get a sneak attack here. Big wide open area with an alien egg pulsating in the center. Yeah, this isn't gonna end well. Can I shoot that from here? Fear the power of my holy sword. Yep, knew it. And we're really going to have to go into hack and slash mode here because our sword doesn't have as much oomph. Slashy, slashy. All right, so take out all these guys first. One more I lose over here. Hey, okay, man, that pumpkin juice is getting filled up. All right, cool. And now we got to take this thing out. Uh, tentacles coming. Damn, I missed another one. Tentacles kind of come out of the ground, and just the more you stab, you got to get to the center here and... Continuously smack this thing until it gets down low enough that you can destroy this alien seed pod. Whatever the hell it's supposed to be. Okay, if you could pick any vegetable to go evil, though, and take over the world, like if you could control, if you're like a evil Steven Universe and you can control vegetables and stuff, I'm not going to use watermelons. I'm using pumpkins. So even when the world ends, at least there's a nice Halloween y vibe. The time rune. Aw, oh, man, we're still going to have to backtrack all the way back to the beginning of the level anyway to get that chalice. Nope, can't break that, can we? Ah, oh, that, yeah, it looks like we could. It just, the rocks seem bigger than normal. Okay. Alright, I think there's just an area with a lot more, uh... Oh, no, 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 we're good, we're good. This, I think, is the exit. Yeah, that's the exit of the level. I'm not ready for that yet. We have... Yeah, we still got... We still need a lot more chalice juice. Which I think... We will find... At the end of this nice little... Stroll through the woods. Okay, 85%. And this brings us... Ah, there we go. Right on schedule. Like I said, I think you really need to kill all these things. And here we go. This will, this will I think, tap it off. This will cap it off. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so, okay, we could have missed two. I think we could have missed two. All right. Get this energy vial, and let's head on back. All the way to the beginning of this damn level. And we can... Oh, whoa. Ha <laughs> ha Took a little bit of a leap of faith there, but we're all good. Buggy beats both. 
Buggy beats everybody. Are you doubting Captain Buggy? Face cam. Uh, it's too much of a pain to set up the, the face cam, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm plus, you know, most of the Let's Plays I do, I always show my face, but, you know, I just realized you don't really need to see my face. You know what I look like. Face reveal at 1 million subs, guys. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll face reveal at 1 million. I will, tell you what, at 1 million subs, I will make a video with my face in it. That is something that is uh, very unusual. You don't usually get to see. All right. Oh, this is actually really good, though, because I can go to the Merchant Goblin down here, too. Alright. Give me some more bolts, sir. Arigato. I think there's... Oh, yeah, I didn't go up this way yet. There's something else up here. There might just be an energy vial or some money. But might as well get everything I have coming to me. No, it's just... Oh, that's just another exit. That's not... I think this is the fake-out exit they put in there for anybody that can't see the obvious broken uh, wall frame there. All right, there's that chalice. All right. And now we can just run all the way back to the other side of the level, and we'll be done. Are we really done, though? I don't think we are. I have this feeling in my bones. Considering that's all I am, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. But I have this feeling in my bones that there's a... An evil pumpkin. More evil and sinister than any of the pumpkins we've slain up till now. He's waiting. Biding his, his seeds. He's biding his seeds for a moment of revenge for the slaying of his brethren. Evil! I love, uh, what was it, Mermaid Man from the original, from Spongebob? I was going to say the original Spongebob. Well, technically, yeah, that is the original Spongebob. The current Spongebob, not a fan. Um, was it, um... I, I, I'm trying to think who the voice actor for Mermaid Man was. I've looked it up a few years ago. I can't remember, though. Who was the voice actor for Mermaid Man? Evil! All bow down before the master of the vegetable patch. The prize-winning plant who can summon an army of carriage with a wave of his noble tendril. He's delicious. He's I, I love Dan's head as he's just like, yeah, I'm not really paying attention to any of this shit. Yeah, what am I going to beat up next? Giant pumpkin? All right, gotcha. All righty then. Here we are. Gaining allies in the whole... Yeah, that's great. I don't care. You, you haven't helped me yet, magic-talking gremlin goblin head. Why would I listen to you now? Boy, what do you want, Woden? You, you must be the luckiest corpse ever to walk the face of the earth. Yeah, I read Dragon Ball Super. It's the first medieval. Well, it's the first medieval remade. But yeah, it is the first medieval. Alright, that's, that's it. All that talk for just two pieces of gold. Well, thanks. Next time, though, I was so excited as a kid when I was fine. Because, you know, when I was a kid, kid, you know, we used to do the uh, the uh, PlayStation Underground, the, the demos. And we only had, like, a few uh, levels of the game, like, up until, I think, the third level. And, uh, yeah, it's it's nice that they, uh, you know, they have that, you know, back when I was a kid, you know, for the tutorials and for the just, like, to get interested in the game, to know how it plays before you actually buy the game itself. Um, but, yeah, I was so excited when I could finally go upstairs in the Hall of Heroes. I'm like, yeah! Dan's Tomb. Oh, thank you for reminding me, sir. I forgot. David, good job, David. Good job. All right, yeah, we are going to backtrack to my tomb for some extra goodies that they have hidden away from us. All right, so... Um, this was actually something in the strategy guide that I uh, had to find out back when I was a kid because I didn't actually even notice this. Dad's Crypt. A good place to go if you're looking for a dead dad. I'm just gonna... I, I will play the role of Tom Baker that they have omitted from this game, unfortunately. They didn't even need to get Tom Baker back because I know the dude's pretty old now. They could have just used the voice tracks from the original game, from the Resurrection. That, that would have worked. Alright, so on top of getting um, some extra money and some energy, uh, there's a wall over here we can actually break with our hammer. And we, the first time we were here in the you know, beginning of the game, we actually didn't have a hammer, but boom! Extra life bottle! And more money! So thank you, David, for reminding me from that. Because I have a horrible memory. 
much to my mother's uh, chagrin. <laughs> my mother, um, the other night, she's like, uh, hey, are uh, you going to Walmart? I'm like, yeah. She's like, can you pick me up uh, some stuff at the pharmacy? Like, so she has a cold. She's like, pick up my medicine. I'm like, yeah, sure. And uh, I go to Walmart, and I'm there for like an hour, and I completely forget, and I come back. And she's like, did you get my medicine? I'm like, oh, I forgot. My, my rule with her is always just like, Mom, if you want something that bad, you got to get it yourself, okay? Because you asked me to get it. I might very well get it. It's more of a coin flip, though, whether or not I'll remember. So, uh, you know, you can't get mad at me, though. That's the point. I, I, I lay this out to her, like, before I go. I'm like, all right, if I remember, but, you know, I might not. <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, the trade-off. All right, here we go, guys. Oh, man, I wish we would get to fight that dragon later in the game. Look at that dragon out in the ocean. If we go out in the ocean and fight a dragon, if I could fight a dragon or a pumpkin, I would definitely go with the dragon. Oh, my leg is cramping up. Oh, man, why did I... Oh, man, I was sitting weird. The root of all pumpkin evil! That's how you have to say evil from now on. Alright, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So the objective of this level, smash a bunch of these pod things. Ew. And then the Pumpkin King wakes up, and we kick his ass, and we send his ass down to Pumpkin Hell, and then uh, we uh, win. Pretty relatively easy level. Straightforward level, if nothing else. Um, yeah, for this level, we really do need crossbow bolts, but... I think there's a merchant goblin somewhere that we can use to buy off of. There's usually one in every level. But first, we have an appointment with a witch. After I kill these bad guys. Die, die, die. Alright, there we go. There we go. That witch's talisman we got back at Cemetery Hill. It's coming in handy. Ah! Oh my god! Like it's a talking turnip. Give them all the love and care a young fruit could ever ask for. From the moment they first push a shoot above the soil, right up until their heads are cut off and eaten. And look, see how they repay me, running around and causing mischief. There's a magic device called a shopping list. I, I don't write things down. You teach him a lesson in manners. I might give you a nice present. All right, so yes, this pumpkin witch, for whatever reason, has a dragon gem in her possession. I'm not really sure what the story is there. Maybe she baked a pumpkin pie for a dragon or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so we need to defeat the pumpkin king so we can go back and get the dragon gem from her. Um, we could have actually completed this level without even doing that. Uh, so going to Cemetery Hill and getting the witch's talisman to begin with is not required to beat this level. But we basically, we get to a point in the game where everything kind of um, narrows and bottlenecks. And unless we had the witch's talisman and unless we had the dragon gems and unless we went to every level in the game, then we can't continue onward. And I'm kind of, I kind of wish they wouldn't have done that. I wish they would have maybe made it so... These side quests that you're doing, like, they don't... Because these aren't even side quests. These are, like, required to finish the game. Like, the whole thing with the Pumpkin Witch and getting the Witch's Talisman. They're presented like they're side quests, but they're really not. Um, you can't finish the game unless you do them. So, I wish there would have been more side quests. There is exactly one, to my knowledge. There is one side quest in this game that is optional, that you don't have to do to finish the game entirely. And that's the Ant Caves. Um... And uh, I wish there, there definitely could have been more of that. Okay, so we're not opening this box up yet. That's not going to hold a helpful dragon god. That is going to be uh, an explosion of great proportions to help us defeat the pumpkin. The pumpkin king's evil! Oh, look at those poor fish! Can someone please help these poor fish? Damn, pumpkin king. You're sucking away all their water. That's not cool, bro. Not cool. I'm gonna bust your pods wide open. I'm gonna bust your jaw wide open. But you don't have a jaw, so whatever pumpkin equivalent of a jaw is. I could have sworn there was a merchant goblin on the backsides of one of these things. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I was like, this is way too easy just to walk up and crush that one pod thing. Crush the pods. Slay the Kins! It's the name of the game. Alright. I think there's one more left. 
Oh, one more after this. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, man, we didn't even need to defeat the Pumpkin King to get the Chalice? Damn. It doesn't matter either way because the Pumpkin King won't... Um, the place that is the Pumpkin King's... Blah, blah, blah. The place that has the Chalice won't open until we defeat the Pumpkin King, so... Here we go. Alright, here we go. Pumpkin King. First thing we're doing. Run! Oh, that didn't even hurt him. Come on, that's not fair, bro. Oh, I think you need to defeat... Oh, I think you need to destroy these first, but that doesn't make any sense. There we go. That took a big chunk out of you. I think I take more chunks out of me with the crossbow bolts, though, to be honest with you. And you might be thinking, oh, that was easy. Pumpkin King's dead. Wow, who'd have thunk it? No, uh, it's not quite over yet. Yeah, because he does that, and then we actually have to go and smash the pods again. Not all of them, though. I think he does a half and half. I think he does, like, he brings back half of the pods, and he's actually regenerating health all the while, so I'm going to try to make this quick. Oh, there's another one. And then, not that one, so it must be this one. There we go. Yeah, he, he's really not hard to beat. He's got a his attacks, but not really, because they don't really do that much damage. Get close to him, take out the tendrils. Oh, and all the while, yeah, he will be summoning more and more evil pumpkin demons the entire time. I think you can, yeah, it's easier to take these things out with crossbow bolts. And then him, you can just pump him through a bolt. Alright. So much of my childhood. Yeah, I mean, this was my childhood. I mean, I played this game all the damn time when I was a kid. This is like the third time I've played it on YouTube, but overall, this is probably the close to the dozen times I've played this game. Come on, Dan. Run over there. He's healing, Dan. You have to hurry, Dan. You don't have time to lollygag, Dan. If there was ever a time to lollygag, this isn't it, let me tell you. All right. Get back over here to start a level. Take that one out. And I think the other one that's... And it slowly gets more rotten and decayed as we go about our pumpkin slaughter. And I think more tentacles are spawned in the meantime. Should have probably saved that explosion box until the end. Here. Eh, hindsight's 20-20. And it doesn't matter anyway, because I think we've pretty much won. Come on, Dan! Hit the damn pumpkin! Why are you target? Why are you auto locking onto these idiots? Oh, there's more of these. I was like, oh damn! I was like, oh, you're done with this. There we go. And oh god, it's all gooey. It's like pustules exploding all over you. And the Pumpkin King's reign of evil has now been replaced with happy flowers and sunshine. And that well is where the uh, chalice is. So we actually couldn't go in there earlier because of the uh, excessive amounts of thorny vines. And apparently, I guess the Pumpkin King's evil does not automatically kill the rest of these guys, but all right. And we jump down here and we get ourselves a chalice. Oh, there's the Merchant Goblin. There we go. See, this game is, like I said, the game is pretty generous with even if you've been, like, through a tough fight and you've lost a lot of health, it usually just gives you it right back, so don't worry too much. And I'm going to enchant my sword in the process. Let's go back. There we go. Okay, full full crossbow and sword is enchanted. Oh! And I think we finally get to go to the upper level of the Hall of Heroes. So, sweets, it's sweets. Uh, do I need to? Oh, yeah, I can, I can go for a little top up. Oh, uh, those poor fish are still dying. Someone please help the fish. Can I at least put them out of their misery? They're slowly suffocating to death. My dad uh, is actually up in Erie, Pennsylvania right now doing a fishing for steelhead trout. It's like a thing. It's like a fishing trip he does every year. Caught four of them this morning. They're pretty big. We've got a bit of snow down here lately. It's snowing outside right now, actually.
Greetings from Bulgaria. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one will be up on the channel. See, the problem was, um, I'm a freaking moron. I, uh, I forgot to record the last session, so I'm not streaming over XSplit or OBS. I'm streaming through Elgato, and that doesn't automatically save to my channel like XSplit does. So, um, or it doesn't even automatically save to my computer. I have to record it at the same time. So, thankfully, I remember to do it this time. I am recording. Yes, I'm just going to double check. I am recording. And, uh, yeah, so I, I can upload this later. But, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. That first part of this, that's gone forever. Because, um, yeah, I didn't, I, I was an idiot and forgot to record. And I'm also an idiot. And, um, you know, just, I, I, I just, I, oversight. I'm sorry. All right, so here we go. Second level. Now, this is when we start getting more than one choice. We have uh, this lady here, this lovely lady that will give us a spear from, like, an African tribe. And then we have uh, uh, Daniel, no, Dirk's, no, no, uh, Daniel Stedf no, Sterngard. Sterngard, that's his name, yeah, because he's Sterngard with the shield. And then this is Ravenhooves the archer, yeah. And then this is Bloodmith Skull Cleaver. He's a lovely guy at parties. And then this is Dirk Steadfist who has the magic sword. It's the strongest sword in the game. So we can get a spear or we can get a longbow. I'm actually going to go with the longbow. And Ravenhooves, the uh, centaur, as you can see, actually, I think we visit Ravenhooves more often than any other hero because Ravenhooves gives us three different weapons at different times in the game. He gives us a longbow, magic longbow, and flaming longbow. And I think he also gives us just treasure and life bottles at different times. Look at you running around in your bones, Fortescue. Your soul, Nouveau Dead. Ah. Nouveau Dead. 20 years later, and I still don't know what that I, means. Raven Hooves, last prince of the centaurs, have not galloped the earth in over 10 <laughs> Jesus, 10,000 years. Damn, what have you been doing? 10,000 years as a statue. Take my Though I guess he created the mohawk hairstyle. That's pretty neat. The option of flaming arrows? It is truly the weapon of noblemen. <laughs> Congratulations! You don't quite have my breeding, Mr. Johnny come lately, but there's hope for you. All right, got ourselves a longbow. Yeah, I'm uploading the. Uh, I'm gonna upload the fan mail stream. That'll probably actually be uploaded tonight, honestly, tonight or tomorrow morning. All right, uh, longbow. See, as longbow as you could figure, basically is going to replace the crossbow from here on out. Although I don't think the crossbow. I don't think the uh, longbow fires as fast as the crossbow. Let's actually do a little test here. So, at the speed of the crossbow there, and longbow. Oh yeah, so not nearly as fast, but there's an arc, and there's way more damage, so I'm definitely gonna go with that. Oh no, keep... that's the problem with the damn enchanted sword. I think the enchanted sword, I think it should only drain the magic if you're actually swinging it. No, just having it out when it's not doing anything and draining the energy, I think that's bullshit. Because it costs money to replenish this damn thing, you know? All right, so now we've finished these little sections. Oh, damn it! I forgot to go to the damn pumpkin witch. Son of a... B damn it. Okay, um... Uh, I don't actually... Okay, here's the deal. If I have to fight the damn... Now it's telling me to replay it. If I have to refight the pumpkin serpent, here's what I'll do. I'm just gonna... I'll just end the level, and then we'll start with the... You know, because like I said, you don't need the dragon gem yet. It's not until much later in the game. But if I have to fight this damn pumpkin serpent again, I'm just going to end the level, and then we'll do that. I'll do that off camera, and then uh, I'll get the dragon gem by the next time we start. Because, yeah, we do need to have that for later. All right, so are those, are those pods back? Yeah, I'm going to have to defeat. Yeah, it's the same level. All right, all right, all right. That's fair. That's cool. Um, so I'm going to quit to the map here. Yeah, that's that sucks. That's cool. I just have to go through the level one more time. It's not a long level. It's just annoying. All right. So anyway, uh, that aside, we can now head to the Sleeping Village, which was the village at the beginning of the game that Zerok turned into a bunch of evil soulless zombies. So let's uh, check it out. Sounds like a fun time. Got a little bit more time left. deadly yes that that is what this town is now i mean like this is pretty funny too you know i wish they would have gotten someone to narrate over it though can you start from the beginning i will give you money to do it uh no 
No. Because <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to get done with this already. You know what I mean? Uh, it's been like what we did. We did the first episode last Monday, and here we are the following Friday. Oh, man, dude. You need to take... You need to have a freaking... You, you need a... You need a... Um, Snickers. You need a Snickers. Eat a Snickers bar, man. Okay. The master possesses them. Yeah, we, we already know this. I love the theme in this level. It is so creepy. <gasps> mouse! Evil mouse! Ugh. Evil hammer-resistant mouse! And you really have to be dead. Oh, okay, so it is red blood with the rats. All right, so green blood for the zombies, red blood for the rats. Guys, those rats did nothing wrong, Dan. The rats did nothing wrong. All right, so here's the deal with these villagers. Um, they uh, will actually take energy away from the chalice if you kill them. In the original game, you could either stun them by running into them like this. Just, I just, I just shield bashed an eight-year-old girl into the side of a freaking cement wall. <laughs> I just, oh my god. But in the original game, I think you could also use the club to, um knock them out uh but i have tried that in this remake and yeah that kills them so don't hit them with the club do not hit them with the club they will die all right so this is going to have a little bit of a puzzle the goal of this level is a uh, little few things we have to do here we have to uh, make a golden cross so we have to gather up various material go into this church place the golden cross right up here on the wall and then that will open up a secret door, which will enable us to get into the mayor's house, which will enable us to get a secret artifact, which will enable us to go further in the game. So everybody with me on that? Gotcha. It's a little bit more of a uh, puzzle kind of level. And apparently when Zarok took over this place, the pest control quit too. <laughs> you get one coin for every rat you stomp, which I think is just funny because that, that could buy nothing in this game. All right, so first thing we need to do is she'll bash another little girl into the side of a building but the next thing we need to do after that is we have to get this uh you can see the chaos rune up there in that guy's mouth we need to get that down so what we need to do is we need to head down to the docks which i think are over yonder oh my god why are there there's other characters other than the little girl why are there so many little girls in this town why are there so many creepy little girls creepy little red riding hoods pull this lever I do not like to shield bash little girls and <laughs> that is not what I want to do as a hero, man. Oh no. It's okay, guys. It's okay. They're perfectly fine. It's like in Looney Tunes, you know? They get some stars over their head like cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Perfectly fine. No brain damage at all. No Little Red Riding Hoods were harmed in the making of this video. All right, so this is the library, and I believe there's another lovely gentleman in here. There he is. So you can actually read these books, and these books uh, narrated by Betty White. It's not really Betty White, but I think it sounds like Betty White. They actually do include History of Galamere. Guide to Galamere, part two. If it's mystery yeah. looking for. So I'm not going to go through all of them. But the one that's the most important is this one. To whom it may concern, I must make haste, for Xerox men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. I use the cross to make the attached cast. I used to play this on PS1. Um, yeah, I did too. Do you have the PS1 or do you have the, like, the, the original PlayStation? Like that big gray brick of a PlayStation? I had the, the PS1 that I had was like white and it was a lot smaller and compact. It was like the, the second release PS1. All right, so we got ourselves one of the pieces in order to finish the cross. We got ourselves a, the uh, mold. Now we need to get some gold. We need to get some gold! Gold! This lovely little, this lady is blocking the door here, so I'm just going to push you out of here all right cool now we need uh to go into another room i forget which building it is see the thing with this game is yeah the uh the doors open as you get close to them so that was the that was the building we were just in so i think it's the pillow building ah um. oh, there it is 
I say it's a pillow. I think it's like a general store. Or oh my god, I'm being attacked by little kids! No! Oh man, they took a bunch of health out of me, you damn brats. Damn. Alright, yeah, here, here we go. Here we go. This is where we need to be. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do before we open, open that cage is we're going to drag this barrel over here. Okay, well, I didn't want to do that, but alright. Okay, drag that over there. Shield bash that lady into the side. Okay, and then jump down here. And down here, there's really nothing that hurts us. But we can bust a bunch of barrels up. Get some extra money. Bust some rats up. You know, whatever. Gotta meet ends meet somehow, guys. Club! There we go. And yeah, we need the earth rune for that, which I believe we will find upstairs. Man, you know, that's just crazy about the muscle memory of this game, because the the way that you did the daring dash... Oh, oh, there's a guy in there. Didn't want to kill him. Oh, he's still alive. The way that you did the daring dash in the original is that you uh, ran while holding down a square... I mean, a triangle and L1 or something. I think Actually, I think it's just triangle. And even now, to this day, even though it's been a while since I played Medieval, I still do the Daring Dash by um, pressing triangle when that actually um, switches the weapons out now. So that just, that just goes to show how good muscle memory is from playing video games. It stays with you. It stays with you. All right, so that lowers this bust. This is the bust of the guy that owns the Troll's Head pub. Mr. Shanks. Mr. Shanks? To clean the stuff. Uh... Um, all right, so I guess, y you know what, that actually makes sense. After Shanks, um, retires from being a pirate, you know, after, you know, he got his fill from being a Yonko in his, in his, uh, Twilight years, Shanks decides to move to England and, um, open up a, a pub. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Shanks. So, uh, yeah. All right, that's pretty cool. I actually completely forgot that that was even in this game. Yeah, the guy's name was Mr. Shanks. All right, so we got Mr. Shanks' bust. We got his bust. Now, you might be thinking, what are we going to do with Mr. Shanks' bust? But don't worry, I have plans for Mr. Shanks' bust. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh, boy. These guys don't look like that. Oh, God. They're the Ruskies! Shadow Artifact! Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the- Comrades, we must find the Shadow Artifact. We have boilers for- They are a pretty cool design, okay. So at this point, thankfully, all of the um, townspeople, I guess, have decided to hide in their homes. Um, or these boiler guards killed them all. I'm not sure whichever comes first. And uh, now we have regular enemies that we can just cut up. And uh, these are the enemies that are actually going to fill up the chalice. So, Because there still is a chalice in this level, but haven't really filled it up at all at this point, because we couldn't have. But, uh, let's get this moving. Slashy, slashy. And as you can see, each one of these guys adds a crazy amount to the chalice, because there's not that many of them compared to, um, you know, because the, the level is uh, nearing the end, and we didn't really have that many, level, uh, many uh, enemies to defeat. Plus, the level is just also kind of smaller than a lot of the other ones. It's just involved with a lot more uh, buildings we have to enter. All right. Uh, and I believe there's another... We open a gate later, and there's more in there. Okay, so the first place we need to go is the blacksmith. The blacksmithy. And what we do here is we put the mold down, the cast for the crucifix, and Mr. Shanks' bust... And then we just uh, work the bellows. And I don't really know if there's a trick to this. Uh, doing it when I was a kid, sometimes it would get made really quick. Other times, it would not. Um, I think the trick, if there... Ah, there it goes. If there's any trick involved, it's just... You want to just tap the jump button repeatedly. But that doesn't make the thing go down all the way. So I think what you really have to do is wait for the thing to go all the way down, then jump. All the way down, then jump. Because otherwise, uh, it really will take forever. Alright, so now we got the crucifix. Interesting piece of 
Christian symbolism in this game. And then boom, and then we get the secret area, and then that's the mayor's key. Well, actually, no, that's not the key to his house. That's actually the key to the safe, which will find the legendary yes, Chateau Atihad. On my travels across Galania, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was that bully boy Zarok will stop at nothing to retrieve this item. I fear that he already knows that it is I who possess it. Yours fearfully. I really just wanted to listen to that. I, I muted my mic for a second there. Uh, yeah, so the shadow artifact is a hand, and the hand that will actually, um, you put it into a magic hole in the ground, and it summons a bunch of demons from hell, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the mayor, I don't know how he got his hands on it, but, um, yeah, he uh, wants to keep it that way. Oh, I was wrong. I guess there is more people in here. Yeah, we weren't in the park yet. This is actually where we find the chalice. Alright, so. Got a little secret trap door to the mayor's house. How we get in the front door is of course locked but we have to play a little bit of santa claus here thankfully back in the medieval era i don't know if the chimneys were deliberately made to be as big as a human adult but you know they are here so that's all that matters and of course it's the mayor so we got a bunch of coins in here for us to steal and those are going to be our last three um victims or fuel if you will for the chalice and here is the safe Chateau Atihad. And then there's just the door, front gate. Alright. So we're gonna slice down these guys. And that's still not good enough. And I think in this level, you really do need to kill every single guard in order to. Chalice. Where is. Where is the gate? I'm burning through my enchanted sword. There we go. Alright, guards. Have at thee! Aw, oh, damn it. I was charging up and you. Aw, oh, poor Dan. Alright, here we go. Oh, there we are. I guess not. I guess it really does give you a leeway with that, like a one or two leeway. Yeah, I know, dude. Don't worry. You're going to have your turn, too. You don't get guns until the second game. Dan gets, like, a pistol and a freaking blunderbuss and a goddamn Gatling gun at one point. It's crazy. And to get the chalice, we just need to bust out this wall right here. One chalice, uh, chalice for Daniel Fortescue. And that'll be this for this level. Resurrection, I think, did a double thing where they did, like, you actually had to go to the Sleeping Village twice, and you had to go there once with just the, um, citizen, I mean, just once with the, uh, townspeople or the guards, and the other time with the townspeople. There's, like, there was, like, two separate levels with the Sleeping Village and the Resurrection. All right, eight chalices. All right, so I wonder if we can get that spear now or if we have to, uh, yeah, I think we can still get the spear. Yeah, yeah, we got a spear. Dang, dang, dang. I like your neck ring thing. You may be weak and feeble like Olmec. So. I like you, Daniel. Ooh, Dan, ooh. Now listen up. Your bow and arrows are fine for itty bitty jobs, but if you want to pack some serious heat, you should take this. Ah, oh, yes, your very long uh, phallic object. Now, in Resurrection, they made, um, uh, what's her name? Inami or Izami? They made her uh, extremely overt with that sexual innuendo. They made her have like huge boobs, like bounced all over the place in Resurrection. And they had her like, you know. Take this spear, grip it tightly in your hands, Daniel. So, uh, yeah. But the spear is really cool. Um, let me just show you just what the spear can do. So, the spear, spear, uh, you can throw it, obviously. And I believe you can also... Uh, did they change that part, too? Really? Okay, you can charge it. Wow. Okay, so in the original game, you could throw it, or you can just, like, poke people with it. And I don't think they gave you the poking option in this one, because I can either throw it, or I could throw it. 
square and circle. Huh. And uh, that's it. That, 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 uh, it's not like, you know, now poking your enemies, it's not like it did anything. It, it actually, I remember it not doing a lot of damage. <laughs> Maybe that's why they took it out. But yeah, that sucks. Busting out a minigun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really did have a minigun. It was insane. That's why I love the second one, man. The second game is awesome. All right. So now, um, hmm. How long have I been streaming for here? This has been... 1 hour 13 minutes. The only thing is, this next level is kind of long. The Asylum Grounds. And uh, the level after that's not that bad. But I think I'm actually probably going to call it here. It's like 4 o'clock. Yeah, that's about as, that's about as far. Because i got some other stuff I have to do today before I head out tonight. So, yeah, I think I'm going to stop here, because I actually have to go back to the Pumpkin Serpent anyway, and I have to defeat the uh, boss again in order to get that, uh, in order to get the gem. Um, actually, wait, you know what? Hold on. Let me try one more thing. One more thing. I want to try something here. This actually might work. Let me see if I could just go into the level, because I technically did defeat the Pumpkin Serpent already. So if the game actually recognizes that I already defeated it, maybe I could just go up to the witch and get the dragon gem and then just quit the level. That would be so awesome if I could do that. I really don't want to fight that guy again. There's only so many pumpkins a man can handle in his life. Right, so let's just see if this works here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of the way. All right. Ah, damn it. I'm Pin Witch. I'm like a mother to the... Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, well, that, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. All right. So I'll, I'll come back later in my next playthrough. Before I start the next stream, I'll uh, defeat that level again. But yeah, I think I'm going to I'm gonna call it here. So next level, we can take out the Asylum levels, and then we can get to um, the Enchanted Earth, which is really what um, the game, kind of the, the overarching plot of the game with the demons kind of starts... And we could do the ant caves and pools of the ancient dead, and uh, that that would probably be a good spot to do that. All right, so um, yeah. Now let me go through some of the super chats I got here before we end. I think I got a few of those. I'm gonna switch to Studio Classic to get those. I'm trying to think how many more playthroughs I would need. Okay, if we can get to, like, Pools of the Ancient Dead and maybe the lake. If we can get through to, like, the lake next episode, then it's really not much more after that. You got the Crystal Caverns. You got the Gauntlet, which the Gauntlet isn't a long level. King Peregrine's Castle, the Ghost Ship. Yeah, maybe, maybe... I'm thinking I could maybe get this done in two more streams three at the most yeah it would be three at the most but i think i can maybe get it done in two i'm just pulling up a list of the super chats right now i had to go back through studio classic though because i'm more used to that buy yourself a mars bar mars is bars i don't think we have them in the states mars is the company that makes the bar but i don't think it's actually called the mars bar here uh, can you tweet out when you go live? Um, I guess, yeah, next time I can tweet out. I just forgot to this time, and YouTube, yeah, YouTube sometimes doesn't remind you. Did you see my last message? Yes. Can you tweet out when you go live? You like to you like to repeat your questions, don't you, buddy? You did that last time, too. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to start from the very beginning of the game, because i got to get through this. Yeah, sorry. And uh, I didn't get a notification of your stream. Well, that's 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 really not on me. I mean, that's YouTube screwery going around. I mean, I have no control over that. I can't, I can't. Uh, oh man, I forgot to flip the notification button. Like, yeah, I don't have that. That's that's on YouTube. So it's weird. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, will Shiryu be involved in any theories on the Mihawk story? Yeah, I talked about that before. I talked about how I think Shiryu might actually kill Mihawk, and then Zoro would have to fight Shiryu, but. I really don't want Mihawk to die. Um, I think that's all of them for this. And just when did you get the game? I was like, I got it last week, and well, two weeks ago now. And yeah, in the PlayStation Store. Yeah. So that's it. 
Um, thanks for everybody uh, for watching. He probably didn't hit the bell. I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard stories about even if you hit the damn bell, it doesn't always alert you. I don't really know. So, anyway, I'm just a YouTuber. I don't know anything about YouTube. All right, well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this will be Techie 101 signing out. I will upload this stream. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the fan mail video, actually. That's one of the things I have to get working on. I have to uh, just really quick edit out the fan mail video. That won't take long, and then upload that tonight before I leave tonight. And then tomorrow I can probably get this uploaded. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching uh, signing out.